Hello everybody, welcome to the most amazing video you will ever see. My name is Samantha and today I am on my bed because would you be quiet? I'm trying to, okay. It's comfy and warm here, that's why I'm here. It's, I've mentioned multiple times that I'm done with chemo, I'm done with surgery, and I'm done with radiation, but there's still a lot of stuff that I have to do. Are you gonna let me make this video? Oh, if you are new, I have cancer. Stop meowing! If you wanna see what's making this noise, this is what's making that noise. I thought I would make this video to explain what the stuff is that I'm doing. <laughs> I take so much medicine in a day, there's so much going on that I don't even know where to start. I think I'm gonna start with the big one, Rivacyclib. I get this shipped to me in the mail like every month and I haven't opened this yet so now it's an even more exciting video, it's an unboxing. I get this box, I get this box, and inside there are three more boxes, which is really exciting. And then in each of these boxes, you open it, and there's three times seven, 21 pills for different days of the week because this medicine I take every day of the week for three weeks and then I get a week off. And this stuff sucks. It really, it really just stinks. This is my week off, so that's why the box has not been opened yet. And when you hear me talking about oral chemo, this is what I'm talking about. This isn't exactly an oral chemo. It's technically not, but let me tell you why I call it that. So, when I started this medication, I got this nice packet from my doctor. Oral chemotherapy education. I had to have a whole meeting at the doctor's office to go over this packet to make sure I don't kill myself by taking this medicine. I take it in the morning before I go to work and it sucks because it makes me nauseous and it makes me have diarrhea and it makes me tired. It's basically chemo because it does the exact same stuff that chemo does. Like it also makes like my mouth dry and my nose dry. My hair is thinning in places. So it, it really does all the exact same things as chemo. But the last time I was at my oncologist, uh, he was like, it's not chemo. And I was like, okay, dude, if you want to get technical. The reason that I'm taking this lovely medicine is because there was this whole trial that went on. So this, in combination with an aroma taste inhibitor, inhi inhibit, inhibit, or inhibit. <laughs> it was found that this type of therapy increased the survival rates of premenopausal women with hormone receptor positive breast cancer, which is me. <laughs> Sometime in the middle of when I was doing my IV chemo, it came out with the results and it was like, yeah, this is really good. This is really helping people. And my mom was all excited. My oncologist was all excited. And they were like, you're going to take this later. Now that time is here. So look up the Mona Lisa trial if you want more information about this. You can't take this without taking letrozole or something else that's similar to letrozole, but I take letrozole. Letrozole reduces my estrogen and they obviously don't want me to have a lot of estrogen in my body for the rest of my life because my cancer loves estrogen so they don't want to give my cancer more fuel to be able to come back and murder me. So along with that, if I'm feeling nauseous, I've got some great nausea medicine to take. Any of the other side effects that happen, I have medicines that kind of counteract those side effects. So that's fun, that just adds to pills that I take every day. For this to work, I've got to be in menopause, chemical menopause, because I'm not in actual menopause because I'm 23. So in order for them to get me in a chemical menopause, they need to give me this lovely shot every month. Zolodex, it's actually kind of terrifying. <laughs> I'm not like afraid of shots, so that's why I say kind of terrifying. 
but let me let me explain what I mean. When I get blood drawn or you know they're putting an IV in or I'm getting a flu shot or even when they're accessing my port I always watched because I want to know when I'm gonna feel pain I want to know if things are going well like the blood's coming out or when it's gonna be over soon like once they start like pushing the shot down then it's over I'm never one of those people that doesn't look at shots except with this because this is not your normal shot it goes into your stomach it's kind of a little pill so they've got to get this big needle thing that's like thick to be able to hold this pill thing in it and I'm probably making it sound more dramatic than it actually is and then they jab it into your stomach it's pointy on the edge so I guess you like, can actually get it into your stomach because otherwise they would have to stab you really hard when they you know push the thing down to inject the pill into you you can like feel the pill going into your stomach and it's just weird and I can't watch it because I don't know what it's called but the thing that they stabbed me with it it's scary looking and I don't want to see that go into me I'm told that if I was more fat then it wouldn't hurt as bad anyway that shot is just another thing that helps shut down my ovaries and that is the reason for my hot flashes because my ovaries don't want to be shut down but the shot and all the other medication and stuff is constantly suppressing them so they're freaking out and hot flashes happen. So maybe they'll get used to it and so then maybe I won't have hot flashes later. But for now, I still have hot flashes. I'm hopeful that they will stop and I hope that they stop before summer because hot flashes are a lot easier to deal with in the winter. I, had, I also had hot flashes while I was on IV chemo so that was in the summer and that was awful. I think it's the Zolodex that can cause heart problems. Currently, I have to get an EKG every month. Eventually, that'll only be every three months, but in the beginning, they want to monitor it closer. So far, my EKGs have all come back fine, so that's good. I can continue the medication because obviously, I love medications. Also, they need my blood. They just really like taking my blood but they're really bad at getting it. Again, this stuff is like chemo and you know, lowers your white blood cells, makes you more prone to infections and can do other things. So they need to check my blood right now every two weeks and then if it's looking good, then they're only gonna do it every month. So being in a chemical menopause plus being on the medication and stuff can do bad things to my bones and can cause osteoporosis. In order to not have osteoporosis, they are giving me this injection every six months called Zometa. I have had one of these so far, and let me tell you what happened. They put an IV in my arm. They injected this stuff through the IV. It took about 30 minutes. My mom was like, hey, are there any side effects that could happen right away with this? And they're like, oh yeah, some people have a low-grade fever and it should resolve within 24 hours. So anyway, I go home and it's like 11 o'clock and I'm trying to go to sleep and I'm freezing. I stay freezing for a really long time and I can't sleep because I'm so cold. It's rare for me to be cold for that long now because now usually I get a hot flash and I have to, you know, throw all the covers off and flop onto the floor where it's cold or like lean against a window or something. So I take my temperature and it was like 97.6. So it wasn't even 98. Okay, I guess I'm just insane then. So I wait like another two hours and I'm like, it's still freezing. So I take it again. My temperature now is like 99. I was like too cold and like sore that I didn't want to get up. I put on like a sweatshirt, sweatpants, fuzzy socks, and I get back in bed. I checked it 20 minutes later and it was 100. And then I checked it maybe another 10 minutes later and it was 101. I took Advil, the fever kept going up. It got up to 102 after I took the Advil. Then it started going down. Four hours later, it starts going back up again. 
but it goes up so fast. It goes up in like 20 minutes and I always could tell that it was gonna go up before it would. So I would get really cold. I would take my temperature. It'd be like 97.9. And then I would sit there and then 10 minutes later it would be 100.5. So it would go up so quickly and I could always tell before it did. So then I would take some Tylenol, four hours later, fever again. Advil, four hours later, Tylenol, four hours later, Advil, and this went on for way longer than 24 hours. It went on for three days. And then I went into the office and they gave me some dexamethasone, which magically cured it. And it also made me feel great. <laughs> I don't know why I can't just have that steroid whenever I want. It's awesome. Um, it's awful because it's gross, but it makes you have energy at least. So my oncologist was like, yeah, I discovered a little trick with Zometa. If you take some dexamethasone when you get the infusion, you usually don't have a fever as much. They also told me that a lot of times people have a reaction to it the first time they get it, but they don't have a reaction the next time they get it. So I'll have to see the next time I get it if I have a reaction, but they're also going to be giving me the dexamethasone right away this time. So hopefully that doesn't happen again. <laughs> I don't really know exactly because I'm not a doctor, but Zometa kind of is there to take the calcium that's in my body and bring it into my bones. I think that's what that does. So in order for it to do that, it I need to have calcium in my body and I need to have calcium carbonate specifically apparently. They told me like I can't just go drink milk because it has to be in calcium carbonate form. I don't know, I'm not a chemist. They also told me I need to take vitamin D. A thousand IU of vitamin D and a thousand milligrams of calcium carbonate. You can either take Tums, because Tums are basically just calcium carbonate, or you can take a calcium pill thing. But the problem with the calcium pills is that they're massive. They're like huge. I'm like, I'm not swallowing that. So I'm just gonna get some Tums. I've never had Tums before, so I never realized that they were so awful. So these Tums here, Tastes like chalk, right? Everyone knows this apparently. Which is, you know, fine, but when you're nauseous from this, this stuff, you don't want to be taking these things because it makes you want to throw up. But I didn't want to be taking the mass pill either. I found these and they're these chewy bites and they're, 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 they're different. Um, they're like this and they aren't as bad as these, these chalk ones. And let me tell you, they aren't good either. They taste horrible, but they're better than these. <laughs> and then I got these nice little adults vitamin D3 gummies. One day the nurse for my doctor called me and was like, hey, are you taking supplements? And I was like, yeah. And they were like, we're also gonna put you on another vitamin D supplement. I don't really know why. They didn't really tell me why and I didn't really ask because I didn't really care. This is D3. This is D2. They're both vitamin D but they're different. How are they different? I have no idea. Why do I need to take both? No clue. I also don't care. This I take every week, once a week, and this, this is the prettiest medicine I have. Look how pretty it is. Oh, on top of all of that, I'm still taking some gabapentin here. So, let me tell you something else. Let me tell you something about gabapentin. The reason that I'm taking it started out with I had neuropathy after Taxol chemotherapy, but gabapentin also helps with hot flashes. <sighs> they're giving me all this medicine that causes the hot flashes. And then they're gonna give me this pill to try to not cause the hot flashes. I'm taking 300 milligrams of it at night, and then I'm supposed to experiment with these 100 milligram ones and take them throughout the day and see if that stops my hot flashes. I don't want to take them because they make you tired, and I don't want to be more tired than I already am because this stuff makes me feel awful. <laughs> also, for those of you who are curious, my next scans, my next PET scan, and my MRI of my rib are in early February. So yeah, before early February, don't ask me about how my cancer is doing, because I don't know, because I can't see and set my body regularly.
That was really harsh and mean. I'm so sorry. Okay, that's all for this video. Give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions or suggestions of other videos you want to see. If you think my channel will help somebody, share it with them and subscribe to follow along with my cancer adventures. Yeah, that's all. Bye!